Home Builder and COVID have turned the great Australian dream into the great Australian nightmare. And there's so many reasons why. It's not just the cost, although in some cases, the cost of building materials have increased a massive 75% in the past 12 months. It's not just the shoddy building practices, although in some cases, defective buildings have cost homeowners their new home. And it's not just the complicated contracts, which caught this guy out who paid $700,000 to build half a house. It's the entire building industry. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why I think the building industry in Australia is broken including a few horror stories that you are not gonna believe till you hear them. So if you thought the guy at the half house was bad, wait till you hear more. Before we start this video, if you find it helpful in any way, do me a little favor and hit the like button or leave a comment below for the YouTube algorithm. Just a little gesture like that can make a huge difference to the channel. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing below. So thanks you guys, it really means a lot to us and let's dive right in. Put yourself in the situation. You spent years saving up for your dream home. You spent months searching the right builder, weeks choosing the right house and package, only for it to all come apart and you have to demolish your dream home because the concrete floor has started fracturing before the building is even finished. This is what happened to two friends from Albany who saved for all their lives to build their forever home. But the shoddy work from the builder caused them to go through a horrendous legal battle that ended up with the house being demolished even before it was completed. Heaps of people who have built or renovated properties have described the experience as a nightmare, a torture experience and it's depressing. And this is all because the building industry is broken. But how is it broken? Why am I saying this? Well, let's start from the top. First, in a lot of cases, there's no independent checking to make sure the builders who are often on tight budgets and low margins don't cut corners. In many states across Australia, people are using private certifiers to carry out the inspections. And that should be fine, they should be independent, right? Unfortunately, there can sometimes be a conflict of interest. As a couple in Tasmania found out, after having to spend $150,000 to fix a renovation that cost $400,000. They had a building certifier who was happily recommended by their builder, and the building certifier didn't find anything wrong with the build. Only when the couple hired their own certified did they find out that there were 30 defects and 12 of them were so serious they weren't actually able to move into the house until it was fixed. But don't you have home warranty insurance to protect yourself from dodgy builders? Yeah, you'd think so, right? Home warranty insurance is supposed to protect you as a homeowner from incompetent builders who skip town, go bust, or part ways with this world. Unfortunately, it doesn't do much protect against unscrupulous builders who are still in business. In every state except for Queensland, there will be no insurance payout if the builder hasn't gone missing, died, become insolvent, or lost their license due to a tribunal decision. Although in Victoria, a loss of license, but not the other three scenarios is enough to trigger a claim. If they're still in their trade, it will be up to the homeowner to track down the builder, instigate legal action through a state tribunal system and pay for it. And judging by the stories that we've heard, it isn't easy. That's because home warranty insurance operates as a scheme of last resort across most of the country. In other words, it's a type of cover that's strictly limited to one of the scenarios I mentioned above. And sadly, it requires you, the home buyer, the consumer to prove the builder is dead, disappeared or insolvent before you can actually make a claim. In Queensland's first resort scheme, the QBCC is meant to pay you the benefit if it agrees the work is shoddy and then go off the builder to get the money back. Victoria's scheme isn't as consumer friendly as Queensland, but it does allow homeowners to access insurance if the builder fails to comply with the court order to repair substandard work. That's available on contract from the 1st of July, 2015. But as you can see, this insurance product has some serious issues, which is probably why it's been a number of a couple of government inquiries over the last few years, but none have done much to improve the outcome for homeowners. Across Australia, different states have different arrangements. In South Australia, ACT and Northern Territory, home builders and renovators are required to take out home warranty insurance for contracts of $12,000 or more. In New South Wales, it's for contracts of $20,000 and more, the same in WA, $16,000 or more in Victoria, and $3,300 in Queensland. The premiums are generally pretty small, between 0.5 to 1% of the contract value, and are added by the builder to the homeowner's cost. So in short, you end up paying for nothing if the builder simply refuses to come back and fix the problem. The crazy thing is that Tasmania doesn't actually have a state mandated warranty insurance scheme. So you need to be really careful down there. The number of years and the amount you can actually claim for and you're covered for does vary from state to state. Although in general, you cover for between five to six years for structural defects, 
And in some cases for non-structural defects, it can be a few months you're only covered for. So what can you do if a builder won't make good? If a builder simply refuses to repair shoddy work on your home or return your money, your only option is to take them to the Consumer Affairs Tribunal in your state. And this can be a pretty lengthy and costly process. The only way it does get easier is if your builder does go broke, unfortunately passes away, or disappears before the complaint is resolved, then you have right to access your home warranty insurance. But bear in mind, it won't cover the legal costs against your builder. According to Choice, one claim they reviewed where they were claiming only $63,000 in damages incurred a $90,000 legal fee. So if you are going down the legal path, you definitely want to know upfront what it's going to cost you and if it's worthwhile. The sad fact that a lot of this is being caused by inadequate laws. According to the Building Confidence Report made in 2019, there are 24 laws and regulations that need to be fixed in Australia, including cracking down on private certification of building and registering, and registering every person in the building process. New South Wales actually failed to implement a law that would prevent dangerous or inferior products being used in the building process. Think the flammable cladding that they used in London. Also, a lot of builders have just been ignoring the laws that are already in place and continuing to construct defective buildings. For example, Griffith University and Deakin University did a study and found a shocking 97% of buildings in New South Wales had at least one defect in multiple areas. In Victoria, that figure was 74% and Queensland, it was 71%. As we covered in an earlier video on buying a unit, if you are thinking about buying a unit, for these reasons, it might be worth looking at one that's over 10 years old, as any structural issues should have shown up by then. The sad fact is some homeowners who have purchased units in Opal Towers for up to $2 million got a nasty surprise when their foundations cracked on Christmas Eve, just a few months after it was built. And there are lots of stories like this. I'll include a couple of links below. You definitely wanna do your research before you're signing any contracts for an off the plan unit. Which brings us to the question, how do you find a good builder? Sadly, so many home buyers have found out the hard way that it's not worth relying on home warranty insurance for protection. With it being a last resort scheme throughout Australia, you should really proceed with caution when shopping around for a trustworthy builder. Sadly, just having a building license isn't a guarantee of reliability or accountability. The best way to find a builder is through personal references from people you trust. It's also important to know that the builder is likely going to be outsourcing some of the hands-on work to tradespeople and some that will be more skilled than others. Doing your due diligence on your builder, even ask them how long they've had their tradies working for, how many people they have directly working for them can help give you an idea if they just outsource all that and find someone on the week or if they've got a team of in-house experts that can help with building your home. The sad reality is unscrupulous builders may skimp on materials, hire low cost or cash trades people, and keep a big chunk of the contract price themselves. Once you do find the right builder, there are a few questions you can ask them. Can they provide some contact details or references for any recent homeowners that they've built for? Maybe talk to the previous customers and ask if there are any disputes about the quality of work or the materials, the deadlines or any unexpected costs. The second question I'd be asking is who will be doing the actual work? Are the tradespeople licensed? Ask for their names and verify by checking the public register in your state or territory. You can do a search and see if the builder's license says only for contracts not requiring home warranty insurance on the public register, it means that the builder hasn't yet been approved by an insurer and can't offer home warranty insurance. If this is the case, find another builder. The builder's name on the insurance certificate should match the name on the building contract and the builder's license. And be careful of this because if it doesn't, the insurer could knock back any future claim you wanna make. But what if you've already started? What should you do if you're already entered into a building contract or started construction? I'd strongly suggest you get your own building inspector to look out for any defects. Remember, as I've said before, home warranty insurance typically doesn't cover you if the builder just hasn't done the work or not fixed defective work. The builder generally has to have died, disappeared, or become insolvent to claim on the insurance. Bear in mind that applies in all states except for Queensland. And remember, the home warranty insurance won't cover you for incomplete work or defects that are outside the period of cover. This type of insurance is different from your normal home and contents insurance, which covers the cost of replacing your home if it's flooded or in a fire or in a storm, etc. You can find more about home warranty insurance through your state or local territory authority. To make a claim, you need to contact the insurance provider and give them all the details. So that's it for today, guys. What do you think? Are you building a home? Are you halfway through? How are you finding your builder? We'd love to know below. If you need help with your home loan, hit us up at huntsgalloway.com.au. And until next time, see you later.